Sort of, kind of, yes. Because at that point in time, I'm seeing you as a little bit of God. And I, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, that's way too much of a stretch for no, me. No, <laughs> but, but Craig... Greg, here we are again, here we are. It <laughs> is this festival of context, nuance, and uh, my goodness, a whole lot of conversation. Mm, yeah. We have had a whole lot of conversation. And, you know, there's that story in the, in the Bible yes. <clears throat> where Jesus turns water into wine. Ah. And, and when they finally get to drink the wine that Jesus had uh, manufactured mm. miraculously, <laughs> uh, the, someone passed a nice comment and said, oh, this is my, they left this for last. They left it for... I, there's a big meta-narrative <laughs> that we have to discuss here. Uh, the best for the last. <laughs> God. Yes. Yes. God, God. Mm. <clears throat> you know, when you, we spoke about the 4,000 plus yeah. or minus, uh, if you go to each and every person there and say, who is God? Yeah. Oh, you'll have books upon books upon books. Guaranteed at least 4,000 plus. <laughs> yeah. You know, people will agree, people will disagree. Uh, there are so many questions surrounding God, and I think I think you and I should admit before we go any further that this this is a topic that is greater than anyone's mm. knowledge or anyone's, because we are we're talking about God. Yeah, yeah, no, we know that much. <laughs> yeah, we we know just so 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 little. And and again, like I've been saying, maybe the best place to start is at the beginning. Who is God? Mm. Or maybe what is God? Maybe that's a question worth tackling at the beginning. Uh, are our Muslim friends worshipping the same God as Christians? Amongst Christians, is it the same God? Yeah. Are there multiple gods? Greg, where are you on this conversation? Yeah, just to add to that, when the 4,000 plus church denominations or denominations yeah. pray, do all their prayers land at the same place? Do all their prayers land at the same place? That's a, that's a big one. Because yeah. if there's this one... <laughs> entity somewhere in the sky who is receiving all these prayers then i guess they do hmm. i guess they do but you know growing up in uh, these uh, interesting african religious systems when we speak to the ancestors uh, the traditional belief is that the ancestors are the ones who understand us mm. and since they are no longer amongst the living they now have the ability to speak with oh. god on our behalf so the prayers that go through the ancestors do they end up at the same place mm. <clears throat> yeah that's that's interesting that you bring that up because there is a a very well-known christian organization that has uh, um, important people that uh, have done good works and they um, are perceived to be able to take the prayers and pass them on. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it brings weight to the prayer, so to speak. Hmm. And this whole idea that <clears throat> uh, our prayers... Are, are good, but if we can get the help of somebody else, it's even better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I don't know. I, do, do, you, do you buy that idea? Because this is, like you're saying, it's so common in 
the world of faith, the world of religion, mm. where God is so big and fearful. Yeah. I mean, we have history of the Jewish nation for thousands upon thousands of years, and you just don't say his name. Mm. And you just you just don't. That's 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 he we do not speak about. And in, in the example I gave you, we go through the ancestors and in other religious systems, there are saints and, you know, people that you go to, to take you to God. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, can, I, I love this. I love this conversation. Yeah. Can, can, is God accessible? So... The real, uh, to me, the underlying question is, is that if you have a small God, and, and, I, and I say that very respectfully, if your God is small, then you need extra help to get this God off the throne to move in your favor. Okay. And if you have a big God... He doesn't need anybody to move him off the throne. He can, he can respond to a whisper. So now you're you're talking about how how we perceive and how understand. we perceive and understand God. Oh, yes. Okay. So if he's big, then he's so big. So so what I'm coming to, he's so big, his bigness comes down to this earth. Mm. And if he's so small, he's up where we're up is. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's up there. And in turn, we have to get some uh, momentum with our prayers. And if we can get some help on the way up, be it from saints or be it from whoever, we landed at the yeah. throne of God. And, and, and he's, oh, yeah. But yeah. if God is big, he's down here. So he's everywhere. He can if he's be. big, yeah, he's big. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, Greg, and and it's a, you know, it's a typical arg argument technique that I I've become accustomed ah. to from you. I mean, it's a <laughs> it's a Greg approach, and it can be uh, it can throw you off sometimes. But I I I hear you. Uh, here, listening to you reminded me of a. It's an, old, it's an old, old song, you mm. know, uh, or at least maybe I remember uh, the older version of it because songs get, uh, you know, they call it what, uh, a cover of the song, you know. Yeah. Uh, but Mr. Director, the title of the song is How Big Is God? Ah. How Big Is God? And <clears throat> if you can uh, pull up the lyrics of that song as I try and remember them here, the, the song, it's, it's a question, how big is God? How big and um, wide his vast domain mm. uh, to begin to tell these lips can only start. He's big enough to rule his mighty universe. Mm. And then now to your point, yet small enough to live within my heart. Mm. So in trying to grapple with who God is. I'm not 100% comfortable with that last comment. <clears throat> as in small enough to live in my heart? Oh, he, he, he uh, sort of, kind of, yes. Because at that point in time, I'm seeing you as a little bit of God. And I, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. That's way too much of a stretch for no, me. No, <laughs> but, but Greg, I mean, it, 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 does he have the capacity? Yes. Uh huh. But then, then if he's in you, he's in me, he's in everywhere. Why not? Then he's in the tree. He's of course, in, he is. And he's in the duck. I mean, don't you think everything has an element of God? God cannot exist in all things. Oh, and again, I just want to make sure that, that, that I, I'm saying this correctly. Yeah. 
God is God and he has the capacity to be wherever he chooses to be. Yeah. Or at least at least um uh yes, he he can be he can be anywhere he wants to be. Mhm. Or we can say, you know what? Uh in in this in this uh <clears throat> room we see that somebody went and did put these little cool little foam pads up here. Yeah. This is the work of someone that had the capacity to get these turned in the right direction and stack them all up. There's evidence of a human being or doing this, but that doesn't mean that is the human being. So what I'm coming to is, is that that in our understanding of God, we see his footprints or his handprints that I'd rather say. Okay. In nature, in particular, I'm using nature, <clears throat> but that doesn't make it him. So when I come yeah. back to this is that, yeah, God can be in you. He certainly can be outside of you. And I'm just yeah. saying that there, there, there's and, and what what I'm what I'm trying to make sure that I express this idea is that I don't go around and say, "Guess what? I'm a little god." No way. <laughs> Maybe you should, but no way. <laughs> you know, because but you can boast that that God has made His home. Yes. In your existence in your being and i can also boast that i am i am i am trying to very be very sensitive to hearing god's um uh, nurture and encouragement sometimes we call it the voice sometimes we uh, there's all sorts of terminology that sometimes is is uh, thrown out there my, my what i'm coming to is, okay. is that that i think we need to be open to the fact that you know, and uh, in, in, in the church talk, they say, well, this is a God moment. What are they saying? And I, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when we see an amazing amount of things fall into place, mm -hmm. and you know what, that, that's just not dumb luck. That, that is a divine intervention it, from, a, from a Christian perspective with his eyes yeah. looking at it. And so from my eyes, I see... A, a God type of action. Okay. My goodness. Who needs the 4,000 plus? Because uh, I think right here between the two of us, we will have 20,000 views <laughs> on who God is like this. Uh, like, no, Greg, I think... I think you were... You want to think you're, you're a little bit of God. Not really, but I want to believe that God resides in everything and even more so in me. So you're just saying is, is that that there's some snake out there. Yeah. So apparently there's a little bit of God in that snake. Yeah, who made the snake? Uh, that's, that, that's a great question. But that doesn't mean that the person that made it is in it. No, but the very, the very fact that I have a child... My child is not me, but my child carries everything that is me. See you fight that. <laughs> <laughs> so that snake, that snake, as much as I don't like snakes, I just have to admit that there is something in this snake that takes it back to the one who made the snake. And that is God. So, <clears throat> if 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 we take that that argument, and we go back one step further, what are some of the qualities of God? And I'm going to suggest, yeah, without even letting you answer, <laughs> okay, <laughs> is that God has an internal component to Him, God. And, and as from scripture always was. And that to me is mind blowing. I, I can understand something living forever easier than I can understand a God that always existed. 
for 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 me that that is I just can't wrap my head around that a hundred percent. Okay, I'm 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 blown away by that. Mm. So if we take that concept that God is eternal, and we apply it to you or that snake, then that little bit of God should never die. And I've buried a lot of really nice people. Well, I'm sorry, I've been, I have not buried them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, they, they, <clears throat> have, they have died. Mm-hmm. So, so therefore they are not God-like? Um, I'm okay with God-like, yeah. but there is not God in them. There is no element of God in them. So what I'm trying I to... I think s- this is a can of worms. I, <laughs> I, I think it's a, it's a huge can of worms, and, and maybe it's a can that needs to be opened separately, because I think the question that comes to the center of what you're saying is the sin problem. Yes. What, what is the sin problem? It, you, you brought up the word sin. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Th- that's 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 what's way it is. Because I would argue and say uh, that person is dying, even though they have God within, because of the sin problem. So what you're saying is that sin can kill God. What I'm saying is that maybe this is a conversation for because <laughs> God, God, I think God, God is life. Uh, that I agree with you. I think God is life, and you can't kill life. You sorry, can't sorry, kill, you can't kill God. You yeah. can't kill God, but the context of life that we are, we have right now has to be had in conversation with death. Yes, yes, the, I agree. With you. Yeah, <clears throat> the two yeah. are just just together. Mm. Okay, and so w- our understanding of God being life just somehow in a complicated way that I do not have the vocabulary to explain, I think it should be in conversation with death. How does that play into our definitions? But there's also another huge elephant in the room here that I think it's worth talking about. Yeah, You and I, you more than I <laughs> keep saying God, He, this God, He, that ah, God, yes, He, yeah. this. Uh, I'm putting a very masculine uh, term to Him. <clears throat> Is God a man? Oh. Or if you look at the biblical narrative, there's many places that a very feminine quality is associated with God. Well, that's true. There are some places where you're like, yeah, there's not much of a masculinity that I see here. A couple of places, uh, more so in the New Testament, if I may say. But uh, there's also the element that, <clears throat> take, take the Old Testament, for example, written primarily by men. Mm. Okay. Thus, it reflects the world of men. Yes. A certain fellow, Mr. Director, certain fellow wrote an interesting book titled The Shack. Yes. I, 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 I'm embarrassed that I can't even remember his, his, his name right now. Uh, the Shack, not the movie. Uh, Paul Young. Mm. Paul Young. Yes. Yep. In that book... <clears throat> God comes in the image of a caring mother. Mm. Now, I hang around Christians. I can tell you there was a good number of people who were uncomfortable. By the way, maybe just to throw it in there, that's a good book. Mm, I agree. That that is a good read. Uh, If you haven't, Maybe shame on you, but <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't read that book, just just take time and read the shack. It's yep. it's just absolutely well done. God is, in fact, there's a line in the shack, and I should have highlighted this in the book, where where God says, "Well, I I become to you something along the lines." I'm paraphrasing. 
I become to you what you need at the uh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is that God can morph into a female type entity or into a male type entity as needed. I think what I'm saying can be above that, Greg. I uh, think what I'm saying is that <clears throat> assigning God a specific gender is uh, dangerous. Because mm. God is more than... So in, in the first few lines of the book of Genesis, God says, let us make man in our own image. Boy, oh boy, don't go there. <laughs> don't. It, and, then in the, and then it says, let's read the whole thing for uh, context. In the image of God, he created them male and female. Female. <laughs> so by Greg's argument, <laughs> therefore God has both qualities. So if, if we're mm. to define God, mm. then should, we shouldn't say he, neither should we say she. Should we? <laughs> uh, are we... Are we, are we, are we is our conversation going close to heresy? <laughs> oh, I, I think we've already tipped over there. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it is... I think what we're saying is God is bigger than that. Precisely. I, and, and I... Uh, I've heard people speculate on this point. Yeah. And that is a key word, speculate on this point. Does God have, have um, male or female uh, characteristics... And I believe that, um, hearkening back to some of your comments, yeah. our language is limited. And we struggle with words and we struggle with how to put this into a, a context, in a, into a picture that makes sense to the reader. To me... The, 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 the thing that I think the underlying component to the male and female is the ability to create, and I say, I use this word loosely, create life. It is a, a wonderful gift. And so when we talk about God and in the image of God, could it be, and I'm just proposing this, yeah is that it's not important if it's we're referring to him as a male or female entity. What's important is what's being said is, is that God has the ability, and this is, this is obvious, to create. And in a very limited way, he bestowed that gift on humanity. And so when we say, when he says we are in the image of God, it is trying to illustrate that this gift of, of uh, reproduction, the gift of life, is, is godlike in, in quality. That is, that is, that is true. Um, I think a, a more literal <clears throat> translation of it would be, uh, God said, let us make human beings to be like us in form and in function form and function. So uh, if God can bring life, then human beings are able to somehow bring life. Uh, and the other one is that if the Christians, a great number of Christians would say, well, when God is saying, let us make humanity, uh, God is existing in relationship. And therefore, God-likeness is also when we exist in relationship with others. There's so many of uh, these ideas that are, <clears throat> are stuck right there into that Genesis narrative. But let me back it up also a bit more. I think we have to admit that in the beginning of the Genesis narrative, if you begin reading Genesis and say, 
Okay, I want to be able to figure out who God is. Mm. You you begin to see the the struggle that the author has to present this being that is hard to present. And therefore, in order to present this being in a way that you and I can understand, there is a, a lot of... Uh, Oh man, this is a big English word. Anthropomorphization, mm. where where we we begin to make yeah. him human like. Yeah. Okay. I probably butchered that word, but hey, that's okay. I butcher words too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To anthropomorphize. Yeah. Anyway, they'll correct me. The online people are always kind enough. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and 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 there it is. Yep. Give you an example. Verse three, and God said, "Ha! Huh, God has a mouth." Yep. God said, "Let there be light." So already on in, on those words, you start building an image of okay, God has a mouth. God has this. And then when he says, let us make humans to be like us in form mm. and in function, there is the temptation to say, oh, like, oh, God is eyes, God is a nose. Yeah. He can all seen. Da, da, da. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> sure. We use, we use imagery. Yeah. But, but is that the case? I, I kind of, in, in the back of my head, hope that it isn't. <laughs> because I, I want a God... Uh, for me, I want a God mm. that is 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 bigger than my little human form. Yeah, uh, not just physically larger, but more more sophisticated, more uh, complex. Yeah, because over time we have become as as a society being really good at figuring out the human body. There's doctors and uh, they, they, they know what they got the gene, you know, human genome code figured out. And, and, and we pretty much have that put together in a, in a little yeah, box. Yeah, in a nice box. Yeah. yeah. So what it says to me is, is that God is just in a larger box. It's like, oh man, that would be so disappointing. Yeah. That would be like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I would be like, you gotta, you gotta do better than that, and 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 that's that's just me. I'm not I'm not you know many people would be disappointed in that comment, but I I I, the back of my head, I want a God that is more sophisticated, is over and above my ability to think right now. Yeah, a God who's nothing like you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would like that God also. <laughs> I'm glad you got yeah. that point. Remember? Yeah, yeah. I, I just needed to throw that in there. You know. Yeah, this this God, Greg. I think <clears throat> the struggle we see in in the text of the Bible is that this God, the authors, are letting us know that this God can be known. Mm. Yes, you know, and and the, and 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 there is that struggle. I mean, if you if you read it, looking for it, you see that struggle of them trying to. Say okay, this is this is how this God is like. This is how mm. he's like. You know, he's like me. He's like you. He's he's big. You know, he in one place he says uh, he created the earth and hung it on thin air. Mm. I think that's in Job. I think. Yeah. Mistaken. Yep. You know, that's how big this God is. But but also this God is small. Uh, he wants to move into a tent in Exodus. Yes. You know, he wants to tent with you. Uh, He's, so it, there is this struggle of defining a being that is beyond definitions, a being that is beyond language, a being that is beyond any kind of uh, words we can use to eloquently describe. Yeah. And, and then <clears throat> what do you do with such a being? How do you, how do you know him? Because he does want to be known yes yes yeah and that that's really interesting because you go you go back to genesis and you see that in the next few verses down god 
steps into this garden. Yeah, got his legs. Uh, got his go. legs. <laughs> He's walking in the garden. Uh, <laughs> you make a legitimate <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say he takes on human form and comes to the garden uh, so he doesn't scare everybody. But uh, what, what, what I'm coming to is, is that the point I'm, I'm wanting to yeah. make is, is that we see a God that wants to have a conversation, is interested in, in the persons that are in the garden. And I am intrigued by that very mm. text is that here it is. This God that, and I'm going back to this, <clears throat> we, we use the word spoke. And, yeah. Yeah. This, and, and, and uh, <laughs> again, my very limited understanding of physics, um, and we need to get get a physics expert in here. Yeah, yeah, you just find but, the but, director. But uh, <laughs> let, let me take this one here. Yeah. Is that the atomic bomb is when you split this atom and something is destroyed. There's, the, you have reduced both halves to a smaller than the whole. And that energy is extremely destructive. Uh, this mm-hmm. uses the bombs. But if you reverse that process, and, and technically is my understanding, if you have enough energy, you could recreate that atom. Mm. So what I'm coming to is that, is it possible when it said God spoke, he initiated so much energy Mm-hmm. That he created out of nothing a world. So that is 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 for me. Uh, yeah, again, I'm, yeah. I'm just. I'm, I, I, we need a physicist in here to yeah. talk about that. But the concept is is that this is a god that has such vast resources that out of nothing, with pure energy, something is created. So mm. now we have we have this entity. Let, let, let's just for the sake of the discussion, yeah. that that God just did it that way. Mm-hmm. Highly unlikely he did it that way. But yeah. just suppose that he did it that way. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And you have a being that has that much resources and understanding and all the things that go with it to pull that off. Yeah. That says, you know what, I, I want to step into this garden and, and I want to I want to hang out with these people. That is such a privilege, such a, an amazing component. Of that human being, that that that, that being yeah. that he looks for a relationship with these people. Yeah. And 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 I am intrigued by this idea of a God that comes looking for us, that has that much resource. This this is really exciting. Is that? Yeah. How could you? I couldn't even dream this up. This is way too good for. For, for something I, you know, if you asked me to write a movie, yeah, I couldn't do this good. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> and and maybe to point out something right there, Greg, and I and I get, I get, I get, I feel your excitement about describing God that way. Your definition of God, my friend, is uh, you are defining who God is through power structures uh, that you <clears throat> become familiar with. And arguably that's true. I've, I've used, yes. Yeah. So God is this very powerful being who gets involved with these not quite so powerful beings. <laughs> and and that is awesome. And so we we, we we do do that. And I think in the, the biblical text, mm. you find examples of God being spoken of as a father. Sure. Yeah. You know, what I'm coming to also is that we, we do define God in the ways that we understand how relationships around us work. Now, here's my question for you. Is it safe to do that? Can we make God in our own image? Is it safe for us to say, okay, <clears throat> this is how I see reality? I this fits. This is how God is. God is a father. God is a powerful being who interacts with not quite so powerful beings. God is a mother. So, so let me respond to it like this. Yeah. You, you have a, a beautiful wife and some beautiful uh, young young daughters that are. I, in, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe I, that. I, yeah. <laughs> She's watching this probably. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 
So um, your wonderful wife, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to just run a scenario yeah. here. She finds a good deal on potatoes that she enjoys using potatoes and in, in, in feeding these beautiful young daughters of yours. Mm-hmm. She buys this large bag of potatoes, gets the guy at the grocery store to put it in her trunk, and she comes back and then she unloads all the groceries and she says, children, when daddy, when big daddy comes home, he's going to lift that out of the car and take it into the house. Yeah. And so the children stand in awe as they see their father with rippling muscles. Oh, lift, yeah. Lift this bag. Of Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and carry it in, flo- uh, you know, effortlessly into yeah. the house. And then there's times when that child, at least in our home, uh, falls and skins their uh, um, finger or something mm. like that. And they said, you know, uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. And, you know, dad is around. You know, it's going to be okay. You know, I assure you that's going to stay on. And they said, no, we want mom. <clears throat> and so mom comes over with her magic kisses and kisses it. Yeah. And says, you know, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And the child now sees dad as the strong, muscular dad that he is, he sees mom as a compassionate, kissing the pain away. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to say is, is that God has these characteristics. So when we as human beings start to write about God, when we want to talk about power, we want to talk about strength, we refer to him as a masculine because that's what the children that are receiving this information understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have a strong man or strong dad that's going to protect us. Yeah. But I'm saying, Greg, that that very system is not 100 percent correct because we are using the known world to describe a being that is above and beyond that. It's true, but in, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, <clears throat> but when, when the writers of the Bible are talking about God in a masculine form, yeah. they are typically associating that with strength, power, and capacity. Yeah, because they're correct. very androcentric in their yeah. approach. And correct me if I'm wrong, but when they're talking about God being, and I'm going to use, I think it's in, in, in Psalms or maybe it's in the New Testament where, uh, no, it's in the New Testament where God, or he cries out, I want to gather you under my wings like a... Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, Jerusalem, oh, yeah, Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's using a very feminine term where this mother hen is gathering her chicks under the wing to mm-hmm. protect them. So now he is using a feminine yeah. f- uh, quality to illustrate a quality about this God. Mm-hmm. Does that make God feminine or male? No, it just, says, it just says that God has a capacity to have that love that we see from a feminine side of, of, of our understanding. Yeah. So we're, we're talking about... <clears throat> It's, it's kind of like you and I are fish, and we're talking about the world of dry. It's like, you know, yeah, it's dry yeah, up yeah. there, brother. Just, you know, you know yeah. I jumped up there one time for yeah. two and a half seconds, and it was dry. Yeah. Let me tell you about dry. I, no. You, we just have this much knowledge. That's right. I, I think that's what I'm saying also, Greg, that all these images we're using are not, are not the full picture. They're just us trying to describe the omnipotent yes <clears throat> in very poor illustrations and and we should make it clear that what we're doing here is this is to describe the indescribable using forms and illustrations that are not complete we can say god is like but to say god is, is we get in trouble. We get in trouble with that because I think ultimately he is, yeah, go he. God <laughs> is bigger than what we 
can even dream or imagine. I could agree with you more. But what I think, I think the authors of the Bible are trying to describe more than the quality of, of God, they're trying to describe a relationship that mm. God is interested in us. True point, yeah. So it's so we take that comment and we say God is mm. this. When the authors are trying to say God is it has a quality that that is best described like this. Yeah, and I, and you see that in the <clears throat> a lot of the epithets that are assigned to God in the Old Testament and it is it is a a struggle of the author to say this is my understanding of God. I mean, you and I a couple of uh, uh, episodes back we spoke about that uh, young girl who has given up on life and she's you know she's she wants to die this is this is not working for her she finds herself on the outskirts of mm. the boundary that society had drawn and and she celebrates God by saying this is the God who sees me yes you know yeah. we, we have all all these things these titles and you know descriptions of God and and I also think that what they are what they are all collectively trying to communicate or maybe I should just be bold and say what they are all communicating is that this God is relatable yes 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 I could agree with you more you know <clears throat> whether it's the image of a father or a mother or you know God who sees, God who walks, God who talks, a God we can't talk about, a God who's so bright in the case of, uh, is it Moses? Uh, mm. he, you know, you can't even look at him. But a God who also exists in a little box in the most holy place. Mm. It, all of these, it's, it's just, they're all just ways of saying, He's relatable. I go say he. See how, how hard language. <laughs> language is just so, God is relatable. Yes. So he, I mean, you and I know this problem very well. I think it's worth talking about. In the Christian narrative, mm. we sometimes feel like we have ownership of God. Yes. There are people out there who choose not to use the title God, and they say the universe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep, yep, the universe. Is, are, are we not talking about the same great entity? When one says the universe and the other says God and the other says the creator and the other says the one we do not speak about, the other one says, ah, a word that you used, the force. Mm. Are we not all just talking about this same great entity that we are all grasping in the darkness to try and know? Yeah, yeah, that is that's a that's an interesting, uh, uh, a slightly upsetting <laughs> uh, comment because. When we talk about, it was oftentimes used, the force of the universe, the universe, mm -hmm. uh, there <clears throat> is this, this draws on a quality of God. And it's kind of like saying, uh, you know, the shadow of Greg went by. Yeah. So this shadow does this and this shadow does that. And you would say, well, actually the shadow is a representation of who God or who the, the person is. <clears throat> so if you're talking about the shadow doing things, you're kind of missing the fact that there is that's I'm actually the generating the shadow. Yeah, but but we're all looking at the shadow, Greg. That's all we we have. 
Christian, non-Christian, wherever you are, we we are all grasping in the dark. Who has seen God? Well, who is God? Uh, Thomas Thomas <laughs> asked that question. Thomas asked that question. I love Thomas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that that becomes an extremely powerful and life changing for me. Yeah. Life changing for me point about the Christian narrative. I, I and I and I have to say this very respectfully. There is some uh, religious groups that have pictures of how they understand God, and there's multiple. Uh, limbs and uh, fascinating, but they're trying to they're trying to picture their God. So in all respect, I I want they make interesting point that God has the capacity to have have his fingers everywhere, have his eyes mm-hmm. everywhere. So they're they're using imagery to to make an interesting point. So. I, I I respect what they're trying to do on that. That that is only an image of of their best way of describing it. Yeah. And I think to some degree that is uh, we we struggle the same way. But what we do have, and I go back to this, is that on the Christian narrative, we say our God got off his throne, got down here, and arrived here and dealt with stress, dealt with hunger, dealt with thirst, dealt with the lack of housing issues, dealt with rejection, all these things that are very human experiences. Yeah. He's relatable. He's relatable. Yeah. And we see him trying to relate to people at at, at week one in the garden. And we see him trying to He's stepping into the life of of the people at at uh, at Bible times. Yeah, he's coming in there, and and this is the crazy thing is is that he says he is God, and that that's a big claim. It's a big claim. Now all of a sudden you got lips, eyes, <laughs> and all yeah. these things that we just a moment ago said. Uh, yeah, may, maybe we we, we got to rethink that. Yeah, but now, Greg, yes, just just to jump in there. Let's remember that John, John, I think in chapter one mm. in the New Testament, says God became yes. flesh. I mean, Powerful point. Implying that... He wasn't at one point in time. Thank you. And so there was a, there's a fancy word that the theologians like to throw around. Uh, incarnation. Mm. Incarnation. There was some sort of incarnation that happened here. Maybe I'm using this word wrong. Mr. Director, incarnation. What does incarnation mean? You know, they, You're not talking about reincarnation. No, no. <laughs> the state of being confined in... Mr. Director, that is incarceration, <laughs> not incarnation. <laughs> I looked at that. I'm like, I was telling you, we should just fire the director. Okay, a person who embodies the flesh, a deity, a spirit, or abstract quality. Yeah, hmm. that, that, that's the right word. Yeah, you know, not incarceration. <laughs> in carnation god becomes yes flesh mm. so even in the very person of jesus this is another grasping maybe an even tighter grip on understanding who god is mm. but he became that yep emmanuel yeah, yeah, he became he Emmanuel, God with us. He he becomes flesh. So I still submit that God is God is something that I just 
can fathom. And so the people out there who who settle and I, come on, I'll admit there maybe someone else might not be comfortable with that and that's okay. But people who then settle for you know the universe. Mm. I, I think they're on to something. Someone who settles for this great force. I mean, you you had a big speech here about the, how this force can do greatness. And and I mean, yeah, I think they're on to something. Because hence why I was arguing in the beginning, because God is it all. He's huge. He's small. He's just everything. Our minds are probably not capable. Right? Probably, mm. and and that 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 I, I'm I'm with you on that. For us to say we can define God, if we can define God, and all the different qualities that we think it is, then we've boxed them up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah once once human beings feel like they have uh, control, yeah, or right of use mm. for God, I think that that's dangerous territory. You know, that's 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 the territory where people get hurt. Yeah. Because then I say, hey, uh, God does things my way. Yes. And I have the complete understanding of how God operates. So you fall in line or you going hey. to hell or whichever place of damnation that your religion uh, prefers to have. And then the next step is, is that if you somehow establish yourself as an authority figure that you have a direct connection with God. Yeah. Then look out for everybody. Yeah. So, so I guess, can we agree that they, ah, this is deadly. There is no one prescribed system of accessing God. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a hard one. Is the Christian system the best? No, is the Christian system the one and only system of accessing God? And need I point out that there are how many denominations? 4,000. Yeah, yeah. And, and all of them seem to access God differently mm. on different days with different systems of you know organization you know that I, I love that question because if we say we are the only ones that have access to God or the throne of God or whatever term we want to put on it yeah and everybody else's prayers gets nowhere. Then all of a sudden, I step into a position of I'm I, I have it, uh, and 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 it goes back to this: is that I think I think it's really critical that if we say that, um, or any any organization says this. You have to subscribe to my uh, criteria of of uh, the meta <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, worldview. And if you subscribe to my worldview, and if you subscribe to my uh, understanding of of who God is, then your prayers are are going up. Yeah, going up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's another thing I just yeah. thought throwing yeah, in there because God is up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! How about going down? Uh, no. We're going up today. Okay. We're just stick with that one. Yeah. <laughs> so your prayers are going up if you if you, if you have that you know if you, you subscribe to uh -huh. my theory. Then that that to me, it, it, it we've shrunk God again. Yeah. And to me, the issue is, is that God is looking for a, a connection. Mm. God is looking for somebody that is on the hunt for God. Yeah. And if you are on the hunt for God, 
I and in my understanding, in my reading, in my and again, this is this is I'm this is me speaking here. But yet, what I know of God, He has got His ear to the ground, looking and waiting for a prayer from a sincere person. And I don't care what their background is, where they're located. If uh, it's it's that moment, like we and I, you and I have talked about what does it mean to to have a resolution, and uh, mm. how do we talk about people, and if we see them unhuman, and all these other other things that that happen, if we put them in the same camp, then they are human. Then we have to say that the God we know will hear them also. Yeah. Because if somehow I am, by my subscribing to this certain set of, uh, you know, dogma, my prayers are are elevated or I'm elevated or however you want to term it. It says by default how I'm understanding God. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think we're agreeing that God is way, way bigger. Yes. God, God is more than our theological systems. Yes. Those, those are just a, another grasp into this structured darkness, this structured uh, space. And we're trying to grasp at it and say, okay, this this is God. This is uh, it's bigger than our denominational structures. He's bigger than... And if there is anyone who... If there is a common denominator, I think that we can hold on to as humanity is that he... This God is relatable. Yes. And <clears throat> it matters not who you are. Uh, he, at some way, he will connect. He, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> In some way, <clears throat> God will connect. Yes. God will connect. And, and I know it's hard. I mean, I have to admit it. It's hard when someone comes and says, oh my, the universe says this to me and every part of my christian background wants to say um, are you talking about god what, what are you talking about i mean i i've seen christians who struggle when someone who is outside of their belief system mm -hmm. says you know god has done a b c d and this is how i see god because you know, we tend to feel like we have ownership yes. of a being. And, and even when I say a being, I'm sure someone watching me is like, yeah, no, just, just force, force. Yeah. But that very entity we're calling God, mm. uh, we don't have ownership. We, we do not have, you know, we didn't sign a, a, an agreement that says we will use in our own way and many religious traditions that have done that have come to a place where that has failed mm. and that has brought so much hurt i mean the very story of jesus the messiah is a, is an interesting one because the religious establishment of his time thought no way no way we know how god operates and he's not operating in this way <laughs> And so they took him out. Yep. You know, so I, I think, I think, I think, yeah, there's a, we are, we are trying and to describe the indescribable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the. And there's no system to, there's no perfect system to connect. There are various out there. And I know when we say that, we have to then deal with the question, then why do religion? I mean, why do Christianity, uh, 
why do all these things? Because if if it's a free for all, then do whatever you want to do and connect. So why do Christianity? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, a uh, great question. Uh, and let me take a, a shot at that. Okay. Because I, I don't think there is a perfect answer, but I'm going to give you my shot on it. I'm going to give you an illustration. Um, your, your daughters one day say, hey, mom, dad, I want to grow some stuff in the garden. They, oh, yeah, sure, go out there. And you give them some seeds and whatever else. And they, they planted uh, uh, by the driveway. You know, it would be handy just yeah. to jump out of the car, drive there. Yeah, I planted there. And, you know, you, finally you say, hey, you know, you should put some in the garden space where we have, you know, consistent water, da, da, da. Okay, we'll do that there. So it comes back to the fact that now you have in your garden a mechanism to assist the growing of a plant. Mm. And yes, you do and kind of on the lawn if you, if you water it like I do every, once, every couple of weeks, <laughs> you know, uh, something grows. But you have a much better chance of growing a more successful garden in the garden. Hmm. Yeah. So what, what I'm coming to is, is that, in a long story, is, is that if you have a, a framework where people before you have said, look, here is, here is things that will benefit you in your Christian growth. Here's things that we have found that are helpful in our experience. As you grasp in the darkness for God. Yes. Okay. Except that, that as we look at the Christian narrative, we see a God that isn't in the dark saying, Oh, take a swing and hopefully you touch me. We see a God that's that has come down and got involved with with us that that is true yeah that that is true in the christian narrative jesus does say that uh, uh here is something you can hold on to yeah. if you have seen and experienced me you have a glimpse of who god is yep. precisely yeah basically yeah. so so yeah in the christian narrative and and yet i think we still agree it's not the it's not you have seen everything about who he is and what I'm trying to say is that can you grow something out on your lawn that's a, that's a tomato plant? Sure you can. Yeah. But if you've got the thing in a garden space where you have 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 people that are beside you, with you, nurturing you, you have you have an opportunity to uh, get to be, uh, push the genetic or maximize the genetic potential of that plant. Mm. And that, I think, is what what a Christian church should be doing. Should be. Should be doing is that it is maximizing yeah. your spiritual potential. I like that. Maximize your spiritual potential. So you come to this place where you meet with all these other people and an environment there is created for you to grow mm. and <clears throat> to have a, a, some sort of firm grip and safe space to wrestle and figure out who you are in the context of this great being. Mm. My goodness, I feel like we fall short from that ideal. Oh, with, first of all, there's humans in the church, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and they mess up. Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess I can, I can also, taking a conversation we've heard before, I could also say, I aim to be that church. Yes. I aim to be that person in, in, in church. And so I, I will create an environment around me that is conducive for the next person to have an enriching experience. And maximize their spiritual potential. 
maximize their spiritual potential. That's a challenge for me. Mm. That is a huge challenge for me because sometimes it's easier to hate people. So if you hate, can you hold love in your heart at the same time? Uh, sorry, we, yeah, we, we, no. let's let's go, let's get back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you you can't. I'm just saying that it's yeah. it's it's so it's so easier especially in the context of adversity mm. it is so easy to just opt for the what seems like a natural way to just say nah i don't care going to make life difficult for you yeah. you know but what we're saying here is that I, yeah the example of jesus just puts it clear also cuz he did that very thing in the context of adversity yes yes and god god is doing this very same thing for us in the context of all these issues we have to deal with including us being a part of the issue <laughs> yeah, my, that's, that's a disturbing oh my, thought <laughs> oh my uh okay greg let let's let's do this um I will go first and then I'll ask you to yeah. speak to this and I'm going to ask you the question so you can be thinking about it mm. okay um uh, if you had the opportunity mm. to tell us here and I'm giving you that opportunity I guess one thing you misunderstood about God mm. and something that you've you know you've misunderstood him and now you are you've seen something different yeah uh and lastly i guess just a definition of where you are in mm-hmm. how you relate with god just just that um i i want to answer that same question cuz Uh I think it's worth pointing out to our viewers that uh this is the final episode in mm. this first season and uh I mean we will be back for more. <laughs> yeah. I mean the issues that we're discussing are just not black and white. Like here we are <laughs> God is really not black and white. Oh. And I think we we do want uh our viewers not only to support this yeah. channel but also to just talk to us. Yes. Yeah. Let's we have some ideas. I mean there were big things we didn't get to cover here yeah, like Satan. Yes. The idea of a Satan. I mean, I know you uh, have spoken at length about some religions that don't even have the idea of a Satan. Yeah. And then what happens? Why do bad things happen to some really really nice people? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some very very nice people. And I'm sure people who are watching uh, also have some things they're like, you know, what, I just, I need a discussion on on yeah. this is it black and white? I mean, what what's really happening here? So if you write to us, yeah. You know, get in touch with us. And all the ways you can get in touch, you'll just see them right there. Yeah. Uh get in touch with us, talk to us, tell yeah. us, and we will have this conversation in uh, the next season. Uh but for now yes as we close this greg what your understanding what did you misunderstand about this great being that mm. we are referring to as god and where are you right now in your relationship yeah. with yeah. this god i growing up i i i misunderstood and i'm ashamed even to say it i i misunderstood how god is really interested in me just as i am i i was of the impression that uh, there were a couple of things i needed to do to get on his good books and i did a couple of things to get on his good books and yeah i am keep on saying he just to show the power of language <laughs> i there's so much that i did cuz I needed to appease God because if I'm if I'm just do enough good things God will smile and say oh, okay I'm happy with you and then he will 
reward me and do this. And that was a great misunderstanding. Right now I'm at a place where I now see that God just is in for me. I can I can just come to him all broken and wounded, joyful, sad, and just mm. and just everything. God is not disgusted by my messy life and he can just he just embraces me and he says, Hey, 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 you know, I care. Uh, oh, I see you. I see you. I, I see that in God. And and that's where I am in my relationship with him right now. You know, I God has become so big in my life. I yeah, he's he's huge. And and I'm even afraid to to even endeavor in the effort of trying to use language mm. to describe he that is above language. And and I am just at all yeah and and that's that's where I am Greg wh- wh- where are you uh you know as, as you spoke I I could relate to a lot of that yeah. uh one of the things that I had I acquired and don't ask me how I acquired this is is that we've been talking about prayer here we we put a prayer request to heaven for help or we do this or the other thing and sometimes when, or many times when I pray, prayed, I didn't see anything. Yeah, I prayed or I didn't pray. It, it didn't make any difference. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then for me, I had somehow acquired this thinking. And I'm not saying that, and, and, and many, many dear Christians, I think, hold this. But I, I have grown past this, is that somehow... The problem laid was with my fault because there was some thing I had not admitted to Mm. or there was uh, something I wasn't doing or hadn't asked for forgiveness or something. The fault was with me. My prayers were not heard in heaven because of, 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 of a event that I hadn't, yeah, yeah, all those things that go Mm. on. And over time, I realized that, you know what? If I have to be perfect for God to hear my prayers, then he's, I hate to say this, but there's probably very few prayers are getting to heaven <laughs> if yeah, you took it a global yeah. thing. And that's not, not what I see in here in the, in the scriptures. So taking that very one simple concept then I say, well, okay, uh, to get heard in heaven, let me get the director pray, to pray with me. Yeah. Let me get my friend. Let me get it. And we in turn will get a thousand prayers into heaven. And for sure, God will respond. And uh, we got a thousand and still nothing happened. Well, let's go 10,000. Hmm. And then I realized is that, you know, I have shrunk God down that I have to have 10,000 prayers on the, at heaven's door before he, and again, we're using where he yeah. responds to, to that. Yet, as I look at scriptures and this beautiful, crazy little song that we've talked about, yeah. he's willing to hear me where I am, as I am. I don't have to be something more than I am. He hears me in my brokenness. He loves me in my brokenness. And I don't have to glue myself together. I don't have to become good enough Mm. for him to hear my prayer. Wow. To me, that has changed. Again, I keep coming back said, so this God is so big. He is so good. He is so gracious. He is, he has my back. Mm. The universe yeah. <laughs> is pulling for me. I like that. 
that has made a profound change in my thinking of who God is. And as, as I have come to a fuller understanding of God, a more, more, more colorful understanding of more God. More nuanced. Or nuanced. Yeah, the nuances. Yeah. I can't help but fall in love with him over and over again. With his, you know what? How dumb was I to not see how good God was? Yeah. I kicked myself for, for having these poor concepts, but in the same breath, I am so glad to be where I am today. To our viewers, I want to invite you. What is it that you misunderstood about God? Yeah. And how has that changed? Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. Share with us, you know, if you don't mind sharing. Uh, we would like to know, what is it that you misunderstood and, 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 and where are you right now? And hey, I don't mind. Tell us what are some of the things you still feel like you're misunderstanding, mm. uh, things that you're not clear about. And, and let's have that conversation. Uh, but for the last time, please like, share, subscribe. Season two is coming. And also, if you go online ah. and celebrate with us and purchase that never black and white T-shirt and celebrate nuance, context, and conversation, until then, continue in God. Mm.